Welcome to the fall 2017 edition of Recreation Television. We're here to tell you about some great programs that'll help your family move, splash, learn, and explore. First, you may have heard Explore Park on the news lately. Exciting new developments are happening over the next couple of years. We'll tell you more about that. We'll also take a look at some fitness programs at Green Ridge Recreation Center for both youth and adults. We'll show you how much fun lifelong learning can be at Brambledon Center with watercolor programs and autobiography classes. Plus, we'll talk to a World War II veteran about an upcoming commemorative event. First, we talked with Doug Blunt about Explore Park. We're here at Explore Park where I'm joined by Doug Blunt, Director of Parks, Recreation and Tourism, and Greg Martin, our Outdoor Services Manager. And there's a lot to talk about because big things are coming to Explore Park over the next couple of years. First, Doug, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, over the past few months, Roanoke County's been putting out requests for proposal to build some adventure recreation amenities here at Explore. How's that been going? We've been really excited with the response that we've gotten from our RFPs. We did receive uh, six RFPs uh, to provide uh, a series of different uh, services as well as programs and special events here at Explore Park and we're right now working towards awarding five contracts uh -huh. uh, to outside agencies and private firms uh, for development and different programs and activities at the park. So we're well on our way to being able to implement the first phase of the adventure plan at Explore Park and having some wonderful new partners to help us with that. So stay tuned at uh, explorepark.org slash adventure plan. You can get news updates throughout the fall because we hope to have some uh, more official announcements about some of these vendors that you're talking about uh, as the months progress going into uh, October, November timeframe this fall. So Doug, can you talk a little bit more uh, generally about what types of amenities uh, we may be seeing here in the next two years? Well, we definitely want to have uh, overnight accommodations. We want to be able to offer cabins, a uh, different type of uh, primitive camping. Mm -hmm. We want to have an aerial adventure course, additional retail and food and beverage mm -hmm. uh, services here at the park. Uh, but we also want to create uh, Explore Park as a venue to be able to host large special events, uh, having different type of services, uh, recreation services that our visitors can take advantage of while they're here visiting the park. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just a series of new programs uh, to be able to continue to draw in all levels of activities uh, here at the park of, by, by different uh, ages and abilities. And speaking of programs, let's go over to Greg. Now, Greg, you've got to be excited about a lot of the changes that are going to be coming as somebody who's, whose job it is to, is to program the outdoors. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity. Uh, so let's talk uh, about, in addition to things coming, what's going on this fall as we're ramping up for these new amenities? Sure. Uh, one of our big uh, projects this year is we're going to be the host uh, for the Association for Outdoor Recreation and Education, uh, their demo day site. Um, so on October 31st from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., it's a free event open to the public. There'll be food trucks, uh, music, um, outdoor gear, retail mm -hmm. outfitters, uh, stand-up paddle boards, mountain bikes, um, climbing gear, all sorts of things for the general public to take advantage of, to uh -huh. try out, to get on the river with us, get on the trails with us. It's going to be a great time. Um, there's also some themed activities. We have a women's only trail ride starting at 1 and we mm -hmm. also have a uh, family friendly costume contest starting at 4 o'clock here as well. Sounds like fun. You can get more information on that at RoanokeCountyParks.com. Uh, there's another event. Roanoke County is a critical partner with uh, the city of Roanoke in, in putting on GoFest. Can you talk about that as well? Sure. Uh, the county will be at GoFest um, on October 13th, 14th, and 15th. Um, we'll be assisting with the pump track area, the climbing walls, the paddle zone. Um, and again, great opportunity regionally for folks to come out and meet a bunch of different outdoor vendors, a bunch of specialty activities, um, and to see what we're offering in the future. And speaking of that regional cooperation, one of the things you might see if you come out to GoFest is that right next to our booth, partnering with us, is the National Park Service. Uh, Doug, can you talk a little bit about how uh, crucial it's been to work with the Park Service uh, in some of our development plans here? Well, the National Park Service and Blue Ridge Parkway is a very integral part of the success here at Explore Park. It's, uh, when you look across the country, there's not a lot of case studies of where you have a large regional park like Explore Park that links up directly with a national park. Now, the Blue Ridge Parkway is the most visited of all the national parks, and we want to be able to take advantage of those 15 million people that travel the Blue Ridge Parkway annually. Um, so being partners with them is very important. We want to have not just connect 
connectivity from uh, the road standpoint of the parkway coming into Explorer mm -hmm. Park, but also having trail connectivity mm -hmm. of being able to link up with uh, equestrian services, uh, but also with mountain bikes mm -hmm. and pedestrian access. So you talk about access. Uh, access is one of the key focal areas as we work to develop this park. What are people going to see when they come out to the park, especially next spring and summer when things really get going out here? Well, we want to be able to begin working on the design of our mountain bike facilities and enhancement to our trails. We want to be able to add a skills park. So this upcoming winter, we will have a citizen engagement period uh, to where our citizens and stakeholders will be able to help to weigh in on what they want to see from a trail system here internally within the park, uh, but also what they want to see from a mountain bike standpoint. Uh, we also are going to be introducing in 2018 some new special events into the park with some new partners that will uh, help to uh, create a, you know, a variety of new activities that we haven't seen at the park uh, to date. Uh, and then we're also hoping to launch some new services like having different type of camping, equestrian services with trail riding, special events, lessons uh, revolving around horses. Mm -hmm. And we think that uh, adding all of these new activities will help to continue to enhance the experience that our users have here at Explore Park. Okay, now let's talk a little more about uh, about timeline. I know everything's not officially in place as to what the vend when the vendors will uh, officially sign the paperwork and all of that. But what's coming this spring? I know uh, disc golf is one of those things that we can we can tell you is going to be coming in the spring. Yeah, we'll be launching a disc golf course late spring, early summer. Uh, that will be at Mayflower Hills Park. That's a very exciting initiative that uh, I think is uh, going to be uh, a, a regionally known disc golf course just uh, from its aesthetics, uh, but also from levels of difficulty that it's going to provide to the users. And one of the best parts about the disc golf course is the partnerships with local enthusiasts to actually make it happen and to, to do the work along with Roanoke County. That's exactly right. It's just a great local uh, public-private partnership. Okay, and uh, so moving on from that, anything else we should look for this spring? Uh, we, I would expect that we would have uh, some level of overnight accommodations uh, that will be very new. I think that uh, uh, along with special events, uh, we will have some new programs uh, that will be opening up to, to the public and some additional food and beverage services uh, as well as retail services. And along with all those great outdoor amenities coming to Explore Park, uh, Roanoke County is going to continue to offer some fantastic programs such as Camp Roanoke, right Greg? That's right, Scott. We got our dates set and we'll have uh, brochures ready to go at GoFest and the general public should be able to, to register very soon after. All right, find out more about any of the programs or anything we talked about here today at RoanokeCountyParks.com. Staff is excited about the great opportunities coming to Explore Park over the next couple of years and we hope you will be too. The growth in the outdoor market in this area has been incredible and we're happy to be a part of it. Now, winter is coming, and what are we going to do when it's too cold to enjoy the outdoors at places like Explore Park? Well, the simple answer is going to Green Ridge Recreation Center, where I've been a member for a number of years, but I've never tried a group exercise class. That changed this week. I'm joined by Ann Lavery. She's one of our longest serving instructors here at Green Ridge Recreation Center. And Ann, I just finished my first group exercise course ever. I know this is hard to believe that anyone who's seen this before, but I've been a member of Green Ridge since we opened in 2010, and I've never once taken, taken uh, set foot in a class. And you know, I think several reasons for that. You know, I'll use the equipment, I'll run around the track, but frankly, I was a little bit intimidated. Uh, that was a little bit different than I expected. Uh, so, first of all, tell me, what are the benefits of exercising in a group setting like well, this? Well, first of all, you should never be intimidated in taking any class at Green Ridge because we have all different abilities, all different right. levels, and the members are so welcoming and helpful to new people. Um, the great thing about Group X is the people, the members, uh -huh. we, our energy feeds off of each other and um, we're just like one big family. Okay, so that's a great benefit uh -huh. uh, there. So you should never be intimidated. Um, body pump is amazing. Um, if you can take a body pump class maybe twice a week in six weeks, you should be really seeing results, toning results. Um, your arms, your legs, you're going to get stronger. Um, it's great for 
trying to keep osteoporosis at bay is uh -huh. great for the bones. We work um, each body part about 100 reps. So it's not even about the weight. You see you used a lighter weight today. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna feel it. It's not about the weight, it's about the repetitions. Uh -huh. It's about your form, which takes a little getting used to. Uh -huh. um, but I'm usually here early, enough before class. So if we have new people, I would encourage them, come a little early if you can, and we'll do like a one-on-one, -on -one, little 101 body pump instruction. And you were very good for me for a first timer, showed me which weights to use, uh, a little, little bit about how to do each exercise, which was nice for me. Uh, we're talking about the benefit of a, a group setting. You know, I noticed different than working out myself out in the gym, is, was you know right at the point where I'm starting to get you know a little tired of this, a little, little bit weary, when I normally, if I'm by myself, I would have stopped. I'm with a group of people, that I, and, and you know, I can push that little bit, little bit of an extra mile. And that makes all the difference in the world because as you fatigue, once you start fatiguing, then you don't want to stop because once you're at that fatigue level, that's what's toning and shaping your body even uh -huh. quicker, okay? So like you said, in a group setting, you're like, well, gee, I don't want to stop now, you know? And you push through. So even if you have to put down a weight and you use your own body weight, or you take a break and you get a drink of water or do whatever you need to do, that's what, that's what keeps you motivated, that's what keeps you going. And I've, I've seen a lot of uh, good relationships, uh, even lifetime friendships formed in classes like this, so it's a great thing. You can join uh, Green Ridge as a member or you can pay a daily admission rate and you still get to take part in the classes now. That's something we've changed if you've been to Green Ridge recently. So uh, you can take a class with Anne, one of our favorite instructors, Thank or you. we have several others here. Look us up at GreenRidgeRecreationCenter.com. Well, at Green Ridge Recreation Center and throughout the Roanoke County Park System, one of our goals is to keep people moving through exciting and engaging activities. Uh, you can see that work for me, but we also try to get kids involved as well. At Green Ridge Recreation Center, we've added some yoga programs that you might want to check out. Bend that leg, arms up like you're surfing. Nice, very nice. I'm joined by Samantha Patterson with Kinder Dance International, and we're proud to partner with them once again here at Green Ridge Recreation Center to expand offerings not only to include the Kinder Dance Top Program, but also Kids Yoga. Tell us briefly about Kids Yoga. So our Kids Yoga Program here at Green Ridge is going to be for ages 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 12. Uh -huh. um, all of our programs are developmentally designed curriculums, so we teach to the total child. We're teaching them physically, emotionally, socially, and cognitively. And this isn't just your typical yoga class, is it? What's the difference? Um, if you looked in through a window, you might be a little confused at first. Um, so our whole idea is for the ages 3 to 5 and 6 to 8, they need to build up that heart rate, they need to get that energy out, and so we're basically oh, yeah. teaching them how to use yoga and their breath to bring that heart be back down, um, especially if they're excited, anxious, nervous. So we're teaching them techniques that they can use outside of the classroom. Well, let's go right ahead and show some of these techniques. We have a whole class with us right <laughs> here, kids. All right. First, you're going to get their heart rate up, right? Let me see everybody stand up. Let me see everybody stand up. I don't want you to run as fast as you can. Scott, too. As fast right, as you can. As fast as you can. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. <laughs> keep running. Lift your knees. Lift your knees. And stop, please. I want you to put your hand on your heart. And it's beating a little bit faster, so I want you to breathe in through your nose and blow a bubble with your mouth. Nice. Everybody pick up your pinwheel. We can try this with our pinwheel. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. One more time. In and out. Very nice. So we've slowed our heart rate down, so we're ready to learn our first yoga pose. All right, Can it let's help do us? it. So we're going to sit down on our backs? Yes, and I am. All right, watch Miss Samantha. One down, legs up. And I'm going to make a flat line with my legs. I'm going to hold my legs with my hands, using my abs. And Mr. Scott is going to come around, and he's going to put a boat on a boat that's sitting Boats nice and tall. Kind of like that? You need to lay Nope, stay up there just like go. that. Lift that back up off the ground for me. Lift, backs up, backs up. There you go, backs up. And we'll put one more boat right here. Very nice. There you go. And what are we doing with this move? Everybody roll your arms. So this um, movement is to engage our abs and our quad muscles. So after this, we would put our boats down and we would poke our hips up like a crab. Let me see everybody poke up like a crab. Can, can you do that? Crab motion? Yes. All right. Very nice. So that's just a really quick demo of some of the things they'll be doing in kids yoga. And just one more time, what should a parent expect when they drop off their kid at this program? 
Um, just expect them to use a lot of energy, uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of energy, and just um, as a way that when they pick them up, just reiterate the stuff that we learn in class of how to use your breath and your mind to calm your body down. All right, sign up for it online at RoanokeCountyParks.com and join the fun. Kinder dance and kids yoga aren't the only youth classes that Roanoke County will be offering this fall. We also focus on arts and crafts. And here at Explore Park, our Artisan Saturday returns in November for our final event of the year. There will be some great kids craft activities there. And if you can't make it to Explore Park, Green Ridge Recreation Center will also be hosting youth and adult crafts such as soap making. We'll check that out. We're excited about several new craft programs here at Green Ridge Recreation Center, and all of them are taught by Lisa Hoyt. Now, Lisa, let's take a look at them. There are uh, three classes we're going to talk about today. Uh, we have versions of at least a couple of them for both kids and adults. So we'll start by soap making. You have a soap making class and a soap crafting class. And if you looked at our program guide and want to know a little bit more about what the difference is, let's talk first about soap making. What's involved in making soap? Three things, distilled water, uh -huh. lye, which is a very dangerous chemical, and some form of oil. And one thing that I explain to people is it's important to use safety precautions, but you have oil in your house, chances are in the form of a bottle uh -huh. or grease that you can reclaim from food you cook. This really? This is hamburger so grease. This came right from your pan? Right from my pan. Wow. This is hamburger. Okay. And I will teach people how to deal with that and clean it up so there's no smell, no trace, uh -huh. and that counts as part of the oil. And what do you use in the class? Do you use hamburger grease we or do. do you use something I else? I will you bring do? that. I will explain to people the sites online that they can use to use a calculator which tells you exactly how uh -huh. much of each oil you need with the water and the lye to make a safe product. Okay. And I you can add different ingredients like coconut oil, you can get really fancy, but this soap right here uh -huh. is an example of just what our four fathers, four mothers made as Castile soap, which is okay. olive oil, water, and lye. So it's, it's that simple. Does it's it take long simple. to make? It takes about, probably about 20 minutes to mix everything together, but then is the waiting part. You have to wait five to eight weeks for it to cure before you can use it. Wow. So I use molds like Pringles cans uh -huh. and uh, goldfish wrappers uh -huh. and cut them up. This is a recycled refrigerator rack. Let it air dry. Uh -huh. Five to eight weeks later, you're good to go. Amazing. You can, you can grate it up and it's laundry detergent. Well, let's move on now. There's a class for an adult and kids also with uh, soap crafting. What do you mean when you say soap crafting? Well, soap crafting is taking a byproduct of this lye soap, glycerin, which is when you take this soap and you boil it down, glycerin is a byproduct. Okay. They then add a bunch of other fancy ingredients and it turns into a detergent that's a very skin safe, uh -huh. very mild, excellent for kids. And you buy this in a craft store? We do not buy this in a craft store. I will give you the link of okay. where to buy it, best price online, excellent, best product. And one of the mm. most favorite things for kids to do are make little embed soaps with these little vinyl oh, fish. Neat. There's a fish right inside the soap. Yep. They can pick their color, they Very use nice. glitter, they can scent it. But also, what they love to do is make this stained glass soap, which is a bunch of chunks of soap that they cut up. We pour some clear base over it. And the base is made of what? The base is just That's simply this melted yeah. in the microwave, so there's no special equipment needed. It, an adult does pour the hot base, and I do this class for adults as well, so uh -huh. it's not as, um, there's a lot more steps that you can do. Right. Then this cools, and the reason this is called stained glass soap is you take out the chunk of soap, use a pastry cutter, cut straight down, and then if you take that middle piece and just hold it up to the light, you'll be able to see wow. the stained glass that's, effect. That's pretty. So really quickly, there's, there's one more class that you wanted to show us. This is a class for just adults. Uh -huh. uh, what's this one called? This one is called Cutting for Machines. And if you have a Silhouette machine, a Cricut machine, a Brother machine, and you don't know how to use it because it's still in the box, this will blow your mind. There are, you're not just limited to t-shirts and decals, although you can do that. You can do jewelry, you can custom decorate bags, you can make signs, uh, stencils to paint your sign, you can put the vinyl right on a sign, you can use this with polymer clay. So one of your favorites, you say, find out how to use this equipment the right way to make some pretty unique crafts, um, um, maybe even sell them on Etsy. So all of these classes available this fall at Green Ridge Recreation Center. You can find them more online at roanokecountyparks.com. Lisa, we look forward to taking the classes. Thank you.
As you can see, when you want to learn a new craft, art, or skill, Roanoke County Parks is the place to go. You can find all of our programs at RoanokeCountyParks.com. Now, if you want to see a beautiful landscape or paint a beautiful landscape, a great place to go is right here at Roanoke County's Explore Park. That's where I'm going to go after I take my watercolor class. I just want to get the strength in the shadow. We're here at the Brambledon Center where I'm joined by Suzanne Ross, who's been one of our longest serving arts instructors here at the facility, and we're excited to have her once again teaching a watercolor class. This one is actually focusing on expressive watercolor portraits. Now, Suzanne, tell us a little bit more about what that means. Well, it's an intermediate class, so people already know how to move watercolor paint. Okay. Well, what we want to do now is to move into something expressive, meaning a face that tells a story, sort of a narration through the face. And to do that, because it's skin tones, we need a lot of practice. So we bring in people, photograph them in the class. Uh -huh. The people in the class choose their models, bring them in. Now why do you do that? Why do you, instead of having them provide a photo, have the subjects actually come in? Their photos are not always exactly artsy. Okay. So uh, w part of it, I guess, is a little photography too, how to photograph uh, a person. Is it a certain type of photo that works better for watercolor than other medium? Uh, I can't really say that. It's okay. just a good photograph. It's like a good painting is a good painting and a good photograph is a good photograph. All right, great. So you start, you bring yeah. the subject in, you take the photograph. What's next? Uh, what we're able to do is with our iPhone, send it to our office and they can print it in an enlargement. Okay. And for them to do that on their own, it becomes very complicated right. schedule-wise. So from the, these photographs, then we use a light box and we put... Um, that photograph down and do a tracing on quality watercolor paper. Okay. 300 pound arches, hot press, smooth surface. Uh, it can take a lot of punishment and changes. Mm -hmm. And what I do basically after they get a basic drawing is just help them get the color that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So there's differences in skin tones. Uh, we also have not only the person to come in, this is Fran Arthur, who was very good to come in. She'll come back when they're ready to paint her, so they can check that skin tone. What see if goes into how, right. how long does it take to, to get a complete work from start to finish, typically? That is a six-week class, a if six you really weeks. want a good one. All and right, and by the end of it, you have something that uh, you can be proud of. You oh, can yeah. meet Suzanne here at the Brambleton Center. Sign up for the program at Roanoke County Parks. Dot com. One of the best parts about a watercolor class or any art program with Roanoke County is the end result. You'll be able to come up with a painting that you can hang on your wall and look at for years to come and say, hey, I did that. I accomplished something. Well, one of our other programs at Brambleton Center where you can tell your own story is autobiography. Very interesting instructor that I met earlier today taught me how to write my own story. Yeah. Really kid. young. That's right. There were houses in the back as well. So. Have you ever thought you had a good story to tell but didn't know how to write it down? Well, instructor Karen Adams has lots of experience in guiding folks on how to write their own personal autobiography, and she's got a class coming up this fall to tell you all about it. Karen, uh, talk to us about what this class entails and, and why you would want to sign up. Well, a lot of people want to write their life stories or part of their life stories, maybe like growing up on a farm or living through World War II or the story of a marriage or something like that. They don't know where to begin. They may not consider themselves writers. And sometimes they don't know how interesting it is. But mm -hmm. every life is interesting. And if you have the right guidance, you can break it down into easy topics that make it manageable to write two pages at a time and get your well, story told. Well, let's backtrack told. a little bit and talk about your experience. You've, uh, you've taught at universities. You, you've taught many people how to, how to really shape, and shape their stories. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the thing is to really, you know, the, it's an old cliche to, to write, write what you know. And when, of course, when you're writing about your own life, that's, you, you really want to just be honest about what's happened to you and what you've learned. Um, a lot of people, I've found over the years really want to share like how their faith has made them stronger and gotten them through things. And I, I've taught at Hollins and a lot of people that I had in creative writing classes actually wanted to write their life story. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how this began. But it's it's good, it's important to start taking notes now before you forget mm, yeah. <laughs> or before we lose our grandparents or people who could you know tell their parts of our story too so mm -hmm. um, I, I always tell people 
it's never too late, you know, but it's also never too early to start writing things down. Absolutely. And it's, it's, you know, you've had the university experience, so you've taught classes like this before. And very interesting from a recreation perspective, because yeah. everybody, like you said, has a story to tell. Right. And Karen can help you guide that story on your own here at the Brambleton Center. Like Karen says, everyone has a story to tell. And with a little guidance from her, you can make your story appealing to others as well. Now, someone else with a good story to tell are nation's veterans. I was fortunate enough to meet with a World War II veteran to help talk about an upcoming event with Roanoke County. I'm joined by Special Events Director Wendy Schultz, and I'm very excited to introduce World War II bomber pilot Russ Robinson. And uh, you'll see Russ and Wendy at a series of special events that we're offering this fall through Roanoke County Parks to commemorate uh, first, the World War II commemoration at the South County Library. Wendy, talk about that event for us. Certainly. On October 28th, we are going to be hosting the Profiles of Honor Tour. This is a statewide commemoration. It's a statewide tour. We're bringing in a 36-foot tour bus that's a traveling museum. It's going to host all kinds of memorabilia and artifacts dealing with Virginia and its relationship to World War II and World War I. All right, we'll come back to that event. Tell me about some of the other commemorative events going on this fall. We have another one which commemorates the 75th anniversary of the Vietnam War, and that's going to be a massed band concert at the Salem Civic Center on November 5th. And maestro David Stewart Wiley from the Roanoke Symphony is going to be conducting a mass band concert involving all of the eight bands from all of the local high schools in the area. It's going to be an amazing concert. Now you'll be able to see Russ at this event at the South County Library. Russ, uh, tell me, tell me what you're most proud of about your service to the country. Well, for an old country boy without shoes and clothes, and you get to be a pilot of a bomber with a 10-man crew, you can be real proud of but you serve the country. Absolutely, and uh, Russ won't be the only one at this event that you'll get to meet that, that has seen incredible things. Uh, Wendy, talk about some of the other folks that will be at this event. Who's going to be there? Um, well, actually, the 8th Air Force, the A I'm sorry, the 8th Fellowship Group has pilots, it has folks from the Air Force, from the Army. It was originally just for World War II pilots, but they have expanded now and take in individuals from all branches of the military. So they will see a wide variety of individuals, not just from World War II, but from, as I said, all branches of the military. Now, Russ, when you have folks that uh, come up to you at an event like this and and want you to tell them a little bit about some of the stories of your service. Uh, how, how do you take that? What, what, what things, do, what do you tell people when, when they ask uh -huh. you to talk about your experience? There's a few experiences like flying out of Charleston in a hurricane. Wow. Uh, coming back from uh, a mission at low level and jump up over the cliffs and you know, guy flying with a white horse, he, he went over the cliff. And that, that was in, in Normandy or in, 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 England. in England? We came back one time by ourselves and we flew the, through the Ruhr Valley uh -huh. with a fighter, German fighter chasing us. And uh, he figured we'd head for the base instead of that coming out of the fog. I went that way and then we didn't see him anymore. <laughs> But we were by ourselves and no chance in the world if he got on our tail. Are you proud of what, what you've done to serve the country? Absolutely. And I volunteered the second time for Vietnam in the Army. Oh, wow. So uh, I'm real proud of it. And, and we're, we're very, very proud of what you've done as well. Uh, you'll get to meet Russ uh, at, at one of these events. And uh, Wendy, one more time, the dates? The dates for the Profiles of Honor Tour is Saturday, October 28th at uh -huh. the South County Library from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the commemorative concert at the Salem Civic Center is November 5th, and the concert begins at 4.30 p.m. And both events are free and open to the public. We'll look forward to seeing you there.
Well, we hope you've enjoyed today's program and have taken something back for your family. We hope you'll get out to a park and explore what we have to offer. Like right here at Roanoke County's Explore Park, we're excited about great new beginnings over the next couple of years as we work our way to becoming an outdoor recreation destination. And of course, you can check out Green Ridge Recreation Center for those fitness programs as well. I know that I've learned a lot doing this program. I hope you'll try some new things as well. You can catch us several times a week here on RVTV and of course anything that you've seen today online at RoanokeCountyParks.com. Until next time, I'll see you in the parks.